This is the famous Big Rock at Tijas on Nicole's property, where animals have access. They like to rub on this rock. And at the bottom here, between next to the tree, we see three canisters of gas. Those are actually full. And you see the wire that's hanging from the car, stretching over? That's feeding electricity. So when I say it would be a shame for Nicole's house and barn to go up in flames, I'm not worried of humans actually setting the place on fire. I'm more worried of the animals themselves setting the place on fire. Here we have one of Nicole's dogs. This is inside her house. It's a beagle that should weigh no more than about 30 pounds. And based on this picture right here, it looks to be about 150 pounds. The dog can hardly move and hardly walk. At one point or another in the rescue world, once you get to a certain age, you, you become protected. And if you do this, you have carte blanche. If the owner of this sanctuary was a 20-year-old woman, what do you think the reactions would be? But because this is a 70-year-old lady, it's acceptable. This is the type of shit coming out of Nicole Joncas's mouth, hitting fucking Gertie's right in the face, and Gertie smells it and says, Ooh, that is wonderful, Nicole. You're an old lady. Let me defend you. I wonder if that's Gertie's brain on the floor at Tija's. Gertie's wants to defend this? Go ahead. That's what you call shit for brains. That's where the uh, dogs that live in Nicole's house sleep with the pig as well, I would assume. That's acceptable to Gertie's. There's nothing wrong there. Apparently, when there's no volunteer day, there's nobody cleaning up nothing at Tejas. This is her front porch. Like I said, at a certain age, this type of neglect in the animal rescue world becomes accepted. The people like Nicole Jancas, the people like Janine Larose, to the others of the Quebec population, this is acceptable because of their age. They're old ladies. Nicole definitely does not properly care for her farm animals. She's not trimming their hooves. They're starting to become ingrown and these animals are having a hard time walking. Here's the pig that lives in Nicole's house. Now apparently every animal in the house is beyond overweight. 90% of uh, Nicole's animals are extremely overweight to the point where it's not healthy. This is what heats up the, uh, or powers the heating lamps. That is definitely a fire hazard. Here we go again with live wires next to water where you have animals playing around. Here we have two turkeys living in an abandoned vehicle with a dryer or washer that's also housing the chickens, actually turkeys. This is the type of crap ass renovations the SPA Canada and the Ottawa Animal Defense League provides Nicole Jancas with. They can't even close up a wall, you can see the uh, light going right through it. I'm sure that keeps the heat real well insulated during winter. Now this is the type of crap ass repair job the uh, Ottawa Animal Defense League does. Now in reality, who is the Ottawa Animal Defense League? Len Goldberg. Little shithead, actually tall little prick. 
he supports Nicole Joncas. And he was outraged at the fact that I exposed the Vachon Liberation video. Funny thing is, his recorded phone call identifies who's on video. So much for offering a legal defense to Nicole Joncas. You actually incriminated her. She might have a barn, but it doesn't really provide much shelter from the elements. But it's okay, she's an old lady. She's got time to go on Facebook and on the internet to complain about the likes of Berger Blanc, La Marchand Pinard, and all of her activism that happens online. But yet she totally neglects and ignores her own backyard. Now the SPCA has been sending uh, Nicole Jean Cas of Tija some animals. They've sent her raccoons. And they even sent her a pig. Why would they do that? They know how the facilities are run down. They're actually doing that as a loophole to give their middle finger right up the ass of the Ministry of Fauna. Because in Ontario, you don't need to have a wildlife permit to have wildlife. But in Quebec, you have to have a wildlife permit. Board of Directors at the SPCA, they like to close an eye on these types of situations. They'd rather save a raccoon from being euthanized at a vet in Montreal. They'd rather ship him off to Ontario, to Nicole, so he can get eaten up by her own animals. Because that's the evolution of life. Gerties, who sat on the board of directors at the Montreal SPCA, has definitely known about this. The Montreal SPCA has been also protecting other liberators such as Madame Miaouf, Louise Gagnon. She inherited two monkeys that were liberated from a Montreal University laboratory that experimented on these monkeys. The board of directors in those days had recommended that the situation be ignored because they did not want to go after somebody who helped the, the animal cause. And they also knew that the university was not going to pursue this issue and just close their eyes on it because they would have to admit that they had animals for lab testing. So what happens? Both sides of the fence keep quiet. Nothing changes. Now, Madame Miaouf, who is Louise Gagnon, she occupied the facilities of La Marche and Pinard. Bernardi might have been the last Montreal SPCA director who actually had real balls. He raided these hoarders. He was going after them. He started with Miaouf. But then the animal activist community turned on him. They accused him of everything this current director, Nicholas Gilman, is doing. For that, he's branded as a horrible, horrible man and kicked out by the board of directors. The board of directors replaces that administration with somebody they can control, Nicholas Gilman. Many were surprised by the fact that the uh, SPCA de Sherbrooke, which is the SPCA Bernardi tried to shut down, is the SPCA that goes into Laval under Montreal SPCA jurisdiction, raids Janine Larove, who was one of the biggest anti-Bernardi supporters out there, and Mapac, 
who's in charge of both SPCAs, Montreal SPCA and Sherbrooke SPCA, claimed they overstepped the Montreal SPCA jurisdiction, sent the Sherbrooke SPCA in Laval because the Sherbrooke SPCA did a better job at catching wild cats. I think it has a lot more to do with the fact that Gilman, Nicholas Gilman, got overran. Somebody acted knowing he would be problems because what happens when the uh, Montreal SPCA gets a phone call from a citizen saying, I have a stray cat that I've found in the uh, Berger Blanc sector? They're going to recommend Janine Larose of Operation Felix. Nicholas Gilman, the Montreal SPCA director, gave some cat food to a well-known cat hoarder who's known to sell said cat food. When confronted about it, Nicholas Gilman claims he'll never do that again, now that he's been informed. However, this lady is somebody that the old administration had tried to seize. I guess the new director didn't look at the old records. He didn't even know that Henry Molson was once the president of the Montreal SPCA and had sunken on the Titanic. What a shame this SPCA has now become. Now, the conflicting values in the animal rescue world is nothing new. A book was even written about it. And I recommend everybody downloads this, this book from uh, the Google Bookstore by George Dupras. The title is Values in Conflict. It's a 99 cents download and definitely well worth it. This book contains a lot of information that I often quote. And uh, Georges Dupras was a uh, member of the Montreal SPCA Board of Directors. And he's written about it. And what he's seen for the last 30 plus 40 years. I mean, he was an animal activist from recollection late 70s, back in the days of the tree huggers and the birth of vegetarians and veganists. He called it a, uh, a social dating club, is really what he called it. Now about Madame Yaouf Ruiz Gagnon. She was being protected by the Montreal SPCA when her volunteer, originally it was her volunteer, Linda Robertson, was the director of the Montreal SPCA in between Alex Wolf and whoever was there before. Why did she not last? Why did the following administrations, such as Bernardi, have a problem with Louise Gagnon. I mean, public health had to get involved because of leptoporosis. She was dumping her animal's feces in the little stream that was adjacent to her property. That almost contaminated the water supply that the city used. Who was helping Nicole Jancas fight Anima Quebec in court? against their inactions on La Marche and Pinard. The Montreal SPCA, Alana Devine. Now, of course, she was a nobody back then. She was only a McGill student who wanted to go back to Ontario because she did not speak French and she would have failed her bar because in Quebec, you need to be able to speak French to pass your bar exam. They pretty much got told, who are you to tell Quebec what to do? The property where Miaouf operated from on St. Justin de Newton. 
That once belonged to Ayerst Laboratories. They did animal testing in that facility. Then it was owned by La Marche Pinard, who used it for dog breeding kennel. Who lived in the house while La Marche Pinard used the facilities as a kennel? In the little front house, the father of Pierre Couture of Berger Blanc lived in that house. So the ties to Berger Blanc and La Marche Pinard are not that very distant. Especially the ties with the father of Pierre Couture and possibly the builders of said house, Ayerst. That most likely explains the rumors as to why Pierre Couture of Berger Blanc would deal with laboratories. Now, why did Miaouf get her hands on that property? Who occupied that property before Miaouf? An unknown dog breeder who bred dogs for security and guard, guarding purposes. So who used to breed guard dogs before La Marche and Pinard? What is interesting is that now the owners are still the son and the brother of La Marche and Pinar, the Rusito, the Rusquito family. Renting that facility right now is a poulain of the family that owns and operates. CIS. CIS is Critical Intervention Services. In the US, the laws are a lot different. It's pretty much La Marche and Pinard security goons with guard dogs, the maître chien, and a gun. Because in Hollywood, in California, Private security is allowed to carry a gun. Something La Marche and Pinard and Circa would be drooling over. So the real big boys have taken over the La Marche and Pinard kennels, which were once owned and operated by Louise Gagnon, and before that, owned and operated by Ayerst. It's funny how she inherited monkeys from a lab only to open a shelter in a lab and for it to have become a horrible nightmare. Nicole Joncas and Louise Gagnon. The biggest supporter at the time for Louise Gagnon and Miaouf was a volunteer of hers named Nicole Joncas. So, hoarder creates hoarder who creates hoarders. Now, what you'll find interesting is that Linda Robertson, Nicole Joncas, Louise Gagnon, they all have the same similar horrible, abusive habits. I wonder where they learned their habits from. Who wrote their rescuing how-to? Those rescuing instructions definitely did not come from the best friends animal society. So here we have it, folks. That was pretty much all I have to say for the moment. The silence has been broken and be sure to subscribe to find out some more of the latest scoops in regards to the animal mafia 
And if your name has been mentioned in one of these videos, you can now wear this badge of dishonor labeled Animal Mafia.